Hi everyone! Thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual Illinois Space Day. Today's presentation will be about moon craters. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off by asking, what are craters? You may have heard the word before, but craters are bowls or hole-shaped indents in the surface of a planet or moon. Take a look at this picture of the moon on the screen. Can you see the little craters? There are a bunch of them, aren't they? But how did these craters even form in the first place? There are three big things that can cause craters, and the first one is a meteorite impact. When a rock from outer space comes and hits a planet or moon, it can create a crater. A volcano exploding can also create a crater, and so can any kind of explosion, as long as it's big enough. So let's take a moment and think about our own moon. Those craters are created by asteroid and meteorite bits hitting the surface many, many times. So, how many total craters do you think there are on the moon? Well, you might be thinking a lot, right? And you're completely correct. There are over a half a billion that are at least 10 meters across, and that's about 33 feet across, and many, many more that are too small for astronomers to see from here on Earth. But what about the Earth's craters? Doesn't it make more sense that since the Earth is bigger, it should have even more craters than the Moon? Well, the Earth does have about 150 craters that we can see. Here on the top left of the slide, you can see the Manson Crater in Iowa. Right below it is the Kara Crater in Russia, and finally at the bottom right is the famous Meteor Crater in Arizona. But still, 150? That's way less than on the moon. Why? Well, it turns out that the Earth has some natural defenses that helps erase evidence of craters. These little tools are erosion, tectonics, and volcanoes. Let's talk a little bit about them separately. Erosion is the process of plant and water moving over time so that it wears stuff down. In our case, erosion wears the craters down. Weather can cause erosion too. For example, natural disasters such as tornadoes or tsunamis can completely destroy craters or other landmarks. Why don't you take a look at this picture? You can see that the waves over time have crashed into the road so much that part of the road is actually gone. But why don't craters erode away on the moon just like they do on Earth? Well, this is because the moon has no weather, no plants, and no liquid water. Erosion can't happen on the moon because nothing that causes erosion exists there. Let's watch a demonstration showing what erosion can look like. You can do the experiment if you have adult supervision, or free, feel free to just follow along. For those of you participating, you'll need an oven tray, whipped cream or shaving cream, and one to two cups of water for this little demo. If you are doing this demonstration yourself, all you need is an oven tray, one to two cups of water, whipped cream or shaving cream, I'm using whipped cream here because it is more visible in the video. First, you have to shake up the whipped cream and apply one to three layers onto the tray. Right now, you're essentially building a little crater out of cream. Then, you can pour the water onto the little crater you just built. And you can see that the whipped cream crater slowly starts to dissolve. And this demonstration simulates the effect of erosion to craters which are created by impacts made by meteorites entering the Earth's atmosphere from space. Well that was a fun demo, but let's move on. What even are tectonics? Well, the Earth has a bunch of chunks of crusts that move around underneath the ground. We call these moving pieces tectonic plates. When the tectonic plates shift, they can cause stuff like earthquakes and destroy our craters. Why don't we watch this little video that explains a bit more about tectonics? Space place. In a snap. Tectonic forces. There was once a time when you could take a stroll from North or South America to Africa, no problem. 
There was no ocean to get in the way, because all of Earth's continents were stuck together in one massive supercontinent called Pangaea. But around 180 million years ago, a rift began to form, and since then, the Americas and Africa have been drifting apart, forming the Atlantic Ocean in the process. Weird, right? Despite its rock-solid appearance, Earth's surface is constantly shifting and drifting. That's thanks to something called plate tectonics. Unlike other planets, Earth's crust isn't simply a single shell. It's got big slabs of crust called tectonic plates that float on an ocean of slowly flowing rubbery molten rock. These plates move because of heat from Earth's core. Earth's radioactive core generates an immense amount of heat that keeps our planet from completely cooling over. Less dense molten rock travels from the core to the surface, where it then cools and returns, a process called convection. Like a slowly moving conveyor belt, this rising and sinking heat and molten rock pushes or pulls the plates together or apart. Through collisions, these plates can raise great mountains or send ocean floor to the depths of Earth's molten interior. When they move apart, new crust is formed, and with it, entirely new oceans can be created. The formation of new ocean crust occurs at volcanic mid-ocean ridges. The destruction of old ocean floor happens in subduction zones. The creation and destruction of seafloor ultimately drives the gradual shift in the arrangement of continents on Earth. Scientists think that it could be possible to walk across a single Pangaea-like continent once again, in just a couple hundred million years. Presented by NASA's... Well, alright, now that we've seen that little tectonic video, and we've also seen what tectonic movement can do, let's talk about why this doesn't seem to happen on the moon. It turns out that the moon does have its own moon quakes, kind of like our earthquakes, but these aren't caused by tectonics. As a result, the craters just stay just as they, are, they were before. All right, volcanoes can also hide proof of craters on Earth. When a volcano on Earth explodes, the lava can flow up and fill the craters. When the lava hardens, the crater is completely gone. But the same question is here too. Why isn't this the same on the moon? Well, it's because the moon barely has any volcanic activity, so there's just no lava to flow at all. Now, we're going to watch a demonstration where we make a mini model volcano. Remember, you can also do this demo, but only if you have adult supervision. In that case, you'll need some sort of soda, a string, and one to two packs of Mentos candy. Otherwise, feel free to relax a bit and just follow along. For this volcano simulation demonstration, I highly recommend you doing it outside with adult supervision because it could potentially be dangerous as the coke will erupt out of the bottle with high speed and would definitely be quite messy. And all you need is one bottle of coke, two packs of Mentos of any flavor, and a string. Although you could use a cup and pour the Mentos into the small opening of the coke bottle, putting them all on a string and release them all together will definitely generate a bigger reaction and coke eruption. Be very careful when releasing the Mentos and make sure you're an arm length away because the eruption can happen very fast. And here is the slow motion of the same reaction. All right, now that we've learned a little bit about erosion, tectonics, and volcanoes, let's get to the most exciting part. We're going to make our own moon. For this project, you'll need a tennis ball, some whipped cream or shaving cream, and different sized seeds. For this moon crater demonstration, we will be making our own moon with a little spaceship with some very simple and easy to find objects around you. You can do this demonstration anywhere, at home or outside. All you need is a bottle of whipped cream, a tennis ball, or any object shaped like a sphere, and some bird food. First, 
you have to spray some whipped cream all over the tennis ball to make the surface layer of the moon. Then, use a spoon to smoothen up the layers of whipped cream to create a smoother looking surface. And now, your moon is almost ready for crater demonstration. And finally, you can sprinkle some various sized bird food onto the surface and you can see the dent they're making on the surface of the tennis ball. This shows what happens to the moon's surface after being hit by meteorites from space. Well, that was a bunch of fun. Why don't we talk a little bit about what we just saw? The reason we were able to see all the craters we created was because our mini moon, just like the real moon, doesn't have an atmosphere. But what even is this thing that I called an atmosphere? Well, an atmosphere is basically a bunch of gases that surround a planet or moon. Our Earth's atmosphere is made mainly of nitrogen and oxygen. But what does the atmosphere do? It protects the planet, kind of like a shell or a case made completely of, gla of gas. Without an atmosphere, Earth would have many craters, just like the moon. And on the other hand, if Earth had a thicker atmosphere, it would be a lot, ho a lot hotter here on Earth. Venus is a good example of a planet with a thick atmosphere. Okay, so let's recap. Our moon's craters were formed by meteorites hitting the surface over and over, again and again, for a long time. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere like the Earth does, it can't protect itself, and so we see lots and lots of impact craters on the moon's surface. We really hope you had a fun time learning about the moon's craters today. Thank you so much once again for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in for the rest of the presentations as well.